If I opened a factory in Canada, it would be just as good as in America. Right. So it's not where you make it, it's who, you, who makes it, how you make it, yeah. what the theories are behind, the knowledge base of the people doing it. Paul Reed Smith, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for having me at Cosmo, it's great. Yes, and we're, yeah, we're so happy to have you here at Cosmo Fest. Yeah. Um, you know, you, <laughs> you've given us, I was just saying, you were, you've given us some fantastic guitars. We're in love with the guitars. Wait a and, minute. Okay. You bought them. Yes, we did. I, I, I give you what guitars if you want me to give you guitars, but... <laughs> well, we'll take the charity case, but we will continue buying them. Okay, I can well, probably look, speak for... Look, it's a merry-go-round. Yes. We spend all the money for the employees and the place and all, and the parts and everything. We make the guitar. Yeah. You buy the guitar. You sell the guitar to the customers. And if your customers are giving you good feedback, you reorder and the merry-go-round goes again. Mm -hmm. The merry-go-round can stop. Right. If somebody's not doing their job, if yeah. we're not doing our job, we just put the third fret in the wrong position, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's over. I mean, yeah. it doesn't take much. Yes. And for me, that merry-go-round that's going on with us, with you trusting us and your customers trusting us, right. and then them telling their friends they should get one, which I heard in the lines all day long today, Yeah. it's a good thing. And so, so it's a joy to be here. I also have relatives in Richmond Hill. So, oh, nice. You know, I called them and they showed up at the um, restaurant last night. They'll be here today. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I was, I was just, uh, I was going to ask you because you're, you're obviously, um, you know, PRS is a brand that is globally connected. I mean, you're an American success, success story, but globally connected brand. Uh, and I just wanted to get kind of your take on the Canadian, specifically the Canadian market, and what your thoughts are about. Canada, yeah. Canada is America. <laughs> that, that, I, don't mean a, it, I don't mean it badly. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I mean is that we're so closely connected in our Absolutely. and our societies have the same kind of moral basis and mm -hmm. we're a melting pot. Canada's a melting pot. Yeah. Um, you've got a huge amount of territory with less people, mm -hmm. but it is colder. <laughs> I, I've been in this town. When it was so cold, I didn't know it was cold. I mean, rubber was <laughs> yeah. shattering. I mean, <laughs> yes. I mean, you know uh, what I'm talking about. It yes. can get oh, yes, we know. bitter yes. up here. Absolutely. And, but I don't see it. I see it as a as a a North American thing. You know, yeah. um, we're more closely aligned than Mexico and the United States are closely aligned. Right. You know, in terms of yeah. of society and heritage and money and. Yeah. and all that and and i don't notice a a difference between you and right. me and the way we're looking at life and the way we live yeah. and the way our houses are and the kind of and that, you know, and that i guess translates to the guitars and the, the sensibilities and stuff so, like that so for me look i travel a lot yeah i traveled so much at one point that i tried to put my seatbelt on in the movie theater <laughs> Because it felt the same, and I was tired, <laughs> right. right? You know, but yeah. for me, coming up here is is I almost forgot my passport because I was going to Canada. I mean, it wasn't. It's not. It's like home here. I've driven here so many times yeah. because we have we have relatives here. You know? Right, right. So you're so, basically saying it's like a kind of like a symbiotic r relationship when it comes to sure. manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's not just that the people have similar views. Absolutely, yeah. Look. There are things about the American culture that are different than the Canadian culture, no question. But yeah. we're more aligned than anybody's talking about. Yeah. And sure. you know, I um, I honor that. So t to me, in the guitar world, yeah. You know, if you didn't tell everybody Rush was a Canadian band, they would. <laughs> You know, because hey, we, listen, we they were so impregnated in the U.S. market. Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. You know. But we claim that yeah, Rush Canadian band. We're proud. I we're, know. We're and, proud of Canadian. Brian Adams. Oh, and, of course, yes. So look, one of the greatest <laughs> moments in rock history. Yeah. Is Brian Adams and Tina Turner going at it mm. on the stage? It's only love. Two rock stars mm. going at it. Watch the video. Absolutely. It'll bring the hairs on your oh, arms yeah. up, and a lot of people well up when they watch it because it is quintessentially the moment of two rock stars going at it at the front of the stage. Absolutely. And because she just passed away, mm -hmm. it's come back up. Yes. What a lick. G give me a break. Oh, yeah. oh, you've got a Brian Adams cover band here. Right yeah, actually, yeah, that's so funny. They are, they are Sorry. on right now. 
they just finished already. <laughs> the interesting thing about PRS guitars, especially lately, that I find is that like, you know, you guys have diversified so much uh, in terms of you know the offerings that you have. I mean, we're looking at the the, D, the David Grissom DGT model. There is, of course, the classic custom twenty four. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you guys have uh, made, I think um, one of my comment is uh, like the SC models are like they're just they're better than ever. Um, they are just a this lot of really S well. This is an SC. Yeah, it's an SC model. Yeah, well, and they're getting closer. Yeah, the SCs and the Merrill May guitars are getting closer. Yeah, and I'm just like uh, so like I mean, what has sort of been your philosophy approaching this? Are you thinking? It's, it's like, dirt simple. Make good guitars. Uh, it's dirt yes. simple. It does look. If I opened a factory in Canada, yeah. it would be just as good as in America. Right. So it's not where you make it. It's who you, who makes it, how you make it, yeah. what the theories are behind, the knowledge base of the people doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, Stradivari was alive today. He would go nuts over private stock colors. That just <laughs> that was. It's just not what <laughs> was available at the time. Exactly. Um, uh, look, I, I, we teach, we're on the phone at three in the morning teaching all the time. We're yeah. not just trying to get a better price out of the manufacturer and what different model is. We're right. teaching about front level. We're teaching about, you know, truss rods. We're teaching, yeah. teaching, 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 teaching. This is all yeah. about guitar making. Absolutely. Our whole theory is don't be a brand, make great instruments yeah. and the rest will follow. I think that's kind of the philosophy that like I'm seeing, like just trying all these PRS guitars and, and that kind of stuff. It's like, but yeah, it's like they're all good. You don't really have that sense of like, okay, this is the bad model, this is the good model. I mean, I would even say like the, it, even the more expensive guitars, it's like, okay, it's things like binding or like, of course, the classic birds or the just a lot of the appointments. But in terms of playability, like all these guitars can play. It makes a difference. Yeah. Look, what's our theory? It should be the the best guitar for the price point in mm -hmm. the market. Period. Absolutely. You shouldn't be able to get a better guitar from somebody else for the same money. That's our mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Whether we pull it off or not, that's yeah. that's that's decided by the market. That's decided yeah. by you guys. That's Absolutely. decided by your customers and the but, artists. As well, the well. artists. Well, David wouldn't put his name on a thing if he didn't like it. That's the thing. Trust me on that one. <laughs> you and got one of the best gunslingers on the planet yeah. in the building. I've seen him walk out at Whiskey A Go Go in LA and burn it yeah, down. Hey, if he, I'm sorry, give him a guitar, a good rhythm section, and a packed house, and he's going to tear it to shreds. Absolutely. He's a gunslinger. He is yeah. really something. I mean, he's he's got, you know, the some of the greatest blues artists of all time have called him up. You yeah, know? So of course. That's, that speaks to everything. And he's yeah, and, and a he's remarkable musician. A remarkable musician. I have seen him have an amp blow up, get oh. pissed off because okay. the amp blew up on him. Well, plug into another amp, walk out at the front of the stage and take everybody's legs out. He's a really <laughs> good gunslinger. I mean, he's a really good guitar player. Do people know that kind of thing about David Grissom? They do in the, the, the house that night. Everybody at the whiskey that night knew it. Right. I've seen him walk out and just burn it down. What's something people don't know about, about him? Yeah. He can tell you every single note. You go right here and he'll tell you what that note is. Yeah. He can tell you what that note is. He yeah, can tell you yeah. what that note is. He can tell you, and he knows exactly where it is in the scale right. that he's playing and he's thinking major scales even when he's playing minor. Right. He's really something. At, look, David is a trained, schooled, studied. He's a really good musician. Absolutely. By the by the by the yeah. definition, I enjoy guitar players that are musicians more than guitar players that are guitar players. Yeah, I think I know exactly what you mean. Um, another artist that you guys have been able to work quite closely is John Mayer. Yeah. And like, you know, that guy, I mean, I think he's one of the all time, like, I think he's up there with the blues greats. And, uh, you know, he's, and now he's with the, the Silver Sky that you yeah. have. I but mean. But when we released it, it broke our website. Yeah. He wasn't getting a thousand views a minute. He was right. getting a thousand likes a minute. Right. That's, yeah. I'm sorry, that's 60,000 an hour? 
likes. Yeah. I mean, he's doing all this on his phone by yeah. himself. Oh, well, I mean, he's huge on TikTok too, and he's all, you know, TikTok. He's, he's just huge. <laughs> he, well, I mean, he's huge. He's huge everywhere. Yeah, I well, should say. He, and and him playing in the Grateful Dead mm-hmm. has put him in a different position. He's being viewed as a guitar player, not just a singer songwriter. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so rare. Look, I saw John Mayer play at Madison Square Garden. This new solo thing he's doing. Right. It's just him by himself, yeah, right? Yeah. And when Springsteen plays at Madison Square Garden or some of these big places, he yeah. has the ability to take this huge place and turn it into a little wooden club. All yeah. of a sudden, literally, you think he's standing next to you. It's wild, right? Right. It's famous for it. Right. I was in tears the last three songs of the of the set of the set. Not because it was John, not because I knew him, not because of the songs, not because of any of that. I watched somebody literally move up to Bruce Springsteen level right. and the entire place was in awe and he turned Madison Square Garden into a little teeny club. Right. And that I've only seen a few people do. Right. I've seen the singer of Mana do that. Yeah. Fair. I've seen Bruce Springsteen do it. Right. I saw Johnny Winter do it when I was a kid. Right. It's not that common an experience where yeah. you literally I saw Andre 3000, of all people, do it once. He turned a place into a yeah. little teeny club. He was standing right next. Yeah. He looked like he was standing that far from me, and he was at least a football field away. Exactly. Unbelievable. Yeah, to create that intimate vibe. Well, in a, in literally, a, their whole ego yeah. expands into the entire place, yeah. not in a bad way, yeah, and turns you into, the, <laughs> he's your friend, <laughs> yes. or she's your friend. You know. Yes. That's, yeah, that's I've seen wild. Bonnie Raitt do it. There's, it's a very rare quality. Right. And I watched John do it in the mm-hmm. Holy Grail venue, Madison Mad- Square Garden. Oh, yeah, Madison Square yeah. classic venue, right? By himself. <laughs> yeah. he, and I he, said to him I, afterwards, I said, Did you, he goes, yeah, I felt it. Nice. But he, he couldn't get welled up because then he wouldn't be able to play. <laughs> yeah, but he, I mean, he put so much emotion to his music. And now he's playing these, you know, the, the Silver Sky guitar is kind of like the... You know, his guitar of choice. He thinks he's playing the best guitar of his life. Exactly. And it's like, do you, I mean, when you're making these guitars when you're, or when you're working with these artists, like, like what goes into the process of like, like I guess, tailoring it to their way? Because you said like... The, he, you got to be a good listener. David said something to me this morning that I need to adjust. Oh, you got to okay. be a good listener. Right. You got to listen. Look, there's a boat of 20 guitars. All right? Right. A boat for everybody watching. That's what they call that, what the rock stars hold their guitars in, right? Yeah. If he doesn't go for your guitar, that's my fault. And I better Mm. be listening to him Mm -hmm. or her. I better be really listening to what they have to say because if if they don't go for the guitar that I made them, I didn't do my job. It's a pleasure to be here. There's a lot of people here. Yeah. Uh, You're obviously doing doing a beautiful job because a lot of the people are so pleased about their PRSs and all that stuff. Yeah. David's here. He's going to put on... One hell of a clinic. Oh, I yeah. got. I was at Soundcheck. It was something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to do something today. I'm going to try to give people takeaways about how to test a guitar okay. without enough experience to be able to do it. You can you can find out how a good a guitar is with a stopwatch. A guitar that rings for 10 seconds is not as good as a guitar that rings for 45 seconds. Yeah. Period. Yeah. End of story. Over. It's it's completely and totally not discussable. It works. Nice. I had somebody take me down for it once. But that's a long story. I'll tell it at the clinic today. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, so thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks Thanks for having me. Thanks for talking he to me. He gave us front and center at Cosmo Fest. What's wrong with that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, one more question, I guess. Uh, what do you see as the future of you know, guitar manufacturing? What do you see? It's a general question. It might be too, too general, but I'm sure how you like. Is, uh, uh, it's our time. You know, we've been staying to our knitting, guitar making, guitar making, guitar making, guitar making. Yeah. Everybody else is doing brands. And to me, mm. the, in the end, the guitar making will win, just like the good musicians will win. Right. I, I don't know. What do I see? I see that people need tools to play music. And right. I see that these young people are starting where we left off. And I love that. Mm-hmm. They literally are starting where we left off. They So somebody who's in the Joni Mitchell kind of another Canadian mm-hmm. oh my god <laughs> um, in that vein gets to listen to her whole body of work by the time she's 14 right 
or yeah. he's 14, you know. So to me, and they get to pick up where we left off. Exactly. On that note, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks so much for, You're welcome. for speaking to me and good luck at the clinic and no have problem. fun. No problem. David's here. Yes, yeah. and David's here.